What up, what up, what up, world? This is your boy, Charles, for, or you can call me Dorian, <laughs> either or, for Cherokee uh, Home Studio Recordings. Um, we're definitely going to go ahead and finish up on this MIDI uh, chord packs, but we're going to do it in a different DAW this time. Uh, what we did in Cubase 11, so we're going to do it in Reason 11. Right, all right, all right. <laughs> all right, so um, I'm in Reason 11, and I have a VST plugin up, which is the... I'm using the Velvet from the um, the Air Instruments, okay? So the Rhodes little instrument. So I'll just play it and you hear the sound right here. Okay. So we're going to do the same thing as we did in the video, uh, Cubase MIDI chord packs. Uh, a card should, should pop up there if you haven't seen that video. So, you know, hit that card and it'll take you to that first video of the MIDI chord packs that I made. Well, just the MIDI chord. This, um, it's the MIDI chord that'll show you how to make your packs or mini packs in Cubase 11. And I'm going to show you the same thing, but different, a way, a different way of doing it in reason. And the reason why I'm doing it in reason, because some people may have reason, some people have Cubase. So um, I have the best of both worlds, but some people may have one or the other. So I'm doing two videos to represent one for Cubase and one for reason. All right, so let's dive on in. So we have this VST plugin here. And what we want to use... With reasons, it it is called um, reasons. Everybody say reasons. <laughs> Reason uh, is called scales and chords. So we want to go to the utility portion. Actually, the players. We want to go to the the scales portion, and you'll see uh, scales and chords. So what I want to do here is drag the scales and chord instrument player directly onto the velvet player and it'll automatically um, attach itself and route itself. All right, so let's go over this. I'm going to play in the key of C minor. So this is where you chose your scale and this is um, key of C here. Um, here at the bottom shows you the scales for uh, the key of C minor. So you can see that here, let's say, for example, if I wanted to change it to D flat, you can see the scale will change here. The ones that you see that is not highlighted, um, meaning that those notes do not belong in that scale. That's why you would see it grayed out. So let's go back to C. All right, so we have C minor. So this is a scale portion of this device. You have a uh, bypass on and off, you can call it switch. Here you have where it says filter notes. And let's say if I turn this on, I won't be able to, if you look over here, I won't be able to play um, any note that does not belong in the key of C. So say for example, if I press C sharp, which is I'm about to press now, you don't hear anything, hear anything. And you can see, um, it gives you a little warning here. But if I press, to see you can hear to see minor chord okay all right so this is what this is for but i don't really need it just to show you here in this section is the chorus section you can turn the chorus on and off if i leave this off we'll play single notes okay turn it on we have our chords okay um here at the bottom you can add how many notes that you want in your chord. So let's just go with one. And let's go with two. Try it. Seven chords. And knife chords. So go on and on. And you're just adding color. Um, here in the middle, it says open. Uh, chorus uh, open 
what this does is add more color and like open up the chord. I didn't say chords, I mean chords. Open up the chords a little more. So let's try, let's listen to C chord. And this is C minor knife. Let's open it up. And it just add more color to it, right? Cool. And here in this section here, uh, you can add octave up. And octave down, you can add that in there and add some more color. I actually like that. That's dope with those knife chords. That's kind of smooth, man. Oh, I like that. All right, so let's <laughs> let's go back and just take these off. Now let's say if I want to alter alter, meaning that I could press the I could press the C minor chord press it again when I hit alt. See how it changes? You know, you could just throw it off a little bit, you know, um, you could alter the chord a little bit, add a little, you know, add the, you know, to make the progression more interesting, okay? So, that is the alt, um, Button you can actually automate that when you want to turn that thing on and off or press with a certain key to trigger it. Here we have a here it says direct chord. I'm um, direct record. Basically, what this does, uh, say for example, if I'm playing the keys of if I'm playing a particular chord progression, and you know, when you actually record what you will see. And when I play, it will just only be one note. And that one note will be triggering the chord, depending on which uh, note that you're pressing on your keyboard. Um, with this turned on, this will actually record all of the notes that belong within that um, C chord, C minor chord. Um, here, where it says send to track, if I chose this, this will actually, uh, once I do the recording, and I'll give that example um, once I record in a few minutes. And this will also give you the full chord, depending on which chord that you're using. So let's go ahead and try and test this out. I'm going to leave this on and we'll go from here. Start from the beginning. Uh, I'll just go 120. Um, we'll do 120 um, tempo. And let's go ahead and hit record. Well, let's loop it. Okay, and I like to have my pre uh, chord going on. Okay, it's just something a little basic. All right, just a little basic. So if you notice, if I click on this, Okay, if I click on it, just see one note, right? And all that doing is triggering the other notes. I mean, just triggering the, the C chord to play the full chord. So I'm going to play it. Let's rewind it. All right. So if we, we don't want that. If we want the full chords in there, we can get out of here. We can delete this. And let's uh, send track to, send to track. Uh, so let's go back here. And it should send it to the track. Okay, one second. Uh, wait one second. Let me do something here. Okay. There we go. All right. All right, so I can delete this because I won't need this anymore. And if you look here, you'll see all the chords that are here. It generated 
with the chord that I pressed on the keyboard, the single note, and this is like for a C minor, and this could probably be, I could remember, but it'll tell you the name of the chords. It'll spell out the chords here in the keyboard top portion right here. So this is what this does. Now, let's get out of this. Let's say, I want to use the record direct, direct record. And let's watch and see what this will do. Well, actually, that's not going to do much. Because we only have single chord. We want chords. Okay, let's go ahead and push this thing back on in. Let's see. Um, there we go. Take it off bypass. Okay. Let's record this again. So if you notice here, now when I recorded this, I now I have all the notes within that particular um, chord instead of just one single note to represent to trigger the sounds. So this is what you can do with these two things here. Okay. Now let's go ahead and get to another part of this. Let's go ahead and get to creating the MIDI chords, which I already just did. I just want to show you guys um, a little bit about the scales and chords and what you can do with a lot of this stuff. So we got that going. So when you're creating your MIDI chords, and I'm just going to do one chord so you'll get the idea. You can, gener you can generate MIDI chords off of this and create your own MIDI chord packs. And the cool thing about when you're doing this, um, you can change things up. As you can see the chords, the chords within the uh, scale, uh, you can alter them the way you want, um, do whatever you want. So let's just go ahead and just record. Um, let's go ahead and record one. Let's take this one off. So we got us a little chord thing here going on. Um, let me just take this off. Click. I won't need click anymore or nothing like that. All right. So let's go ahead and send to track. All right. So we have our chord thing here. We could take this off. Don't really need these now. All right. So we have our chords, right? And let's play. Okay, so here is your <laughs> MIDI chord pack. Again, let's click on it. As you can see here in Reason, I can pretty much alter these notes if I want. I could change things up. I can move um, a note within this key. I can move it an octave higher. Let's say, for example, if I want to move this here. Do whatever you want. You can change the color, do whatever you want, you know? Let's put this over here. Oops, there we go. Um, whatever you feel like doing, being creative, you know, you can even change the velocities um, for particular chords. You can do all those things to make them even more real. Whatever you like before you export the MIDI data. Okay, so this is 
how you create your MIDI chord uh, pack or, or creating your MIDI data for your MIDI chord pack folders. Now, the last thing what I would do, uh, once I'm done, if I know I'm done, I will export this uh, to a MIDI file. So export MIDI file. So you export it to a MIDI file and you keep the locators between the left and the right because that's what it's going to, it's going to uh, export it like a loop. So just think of it as being a MIDI loop. So um, I would definitely export this and, you know, choose the directory with a uh, folder that you want it on. And that's it. And now you will repeat that step and then you'll name them you know, the notes, you I mean, you'll name the chords, whatever you, whatever packs that you're trying to create. So you name them, you want to give them the name of the packs. You don't necessarily have to give tempo because with MIDI, you can alter the tempo to wherever you want. So they can do whatever they want to that. But it's always cool to name um, the MIDI packs. Or if you want, you can name each chord if you like to as well within the MIDI pack make it more easy for them if they want to know. And if you want to know the chords and don't know much music theory, you can, if you press, you can see, um, you should be able to see it. Up in the piano roll in the device, and you can see the name of the chord. So many things that you can do and very simple, very easy. So this is how you create your MIDI chord pack. So if you like this video, you know, give a thumbs up. Uh, please subscribe, hit that subscribe button and alert button. Like, comment if you like or don't like. Um, just still comment. I like to know what you think about it. And I just tried to make this video quick and easy for you. Um, if you have any questions, again, just give me a comment down there and then we can talk about it. All right, I am out of here, fam. 